Welcome into the K0LWC Ham Shack. Tonight, very interesting topic that I think a lot of folks in the ham radio community and the AWRL are not thinking enough about. Now, me, I'm an Apple fanboy, and if you're like me, September is practically a national holiday. It's the month we normally see the new iPhones come out. But this year, this year, Apple had a very interesting announcement that really caught my eye as both a consumer and a ham radio operator that you all should be thinking about as well. And that really is revolving around their satellite technology called Emergency SOS. Emergency SOS is pretty straightforward. They've invested a half a billion dollars in a company called Global Star to build out a low Earth orbit satellite network that will allow users when they leave their normal cell coverage from terrestrial cell phone uh, towers to pick up the satellite network and be able to send a text message when they need help and emergency services. But they're not the only game in town, and that's what makes this such an interesting topic. Global Star and Apple in that partnership is just the tip of the iceberg. AST Space Mobile, Starlink, Link, AT&T, Vodafone, T-Mobile, they all have contracts in place to start building out these networks in low Earth orbit. So why is this actually happening? Well, there's a few reasons for it. First, the rapid uh, technological innovation on miniaturization of software-defined radios. That's number one. Number two is the low barrier of entry now to get into space, thanks to Elon Musk and SpaceX. Uh, and the third option really is the improvements in the antennas on these satellites. One of the things they had to do was figure out how do they actually get a signal from a phone like this that does not have a big bulky antenna, doesn't have more power output because these are regulated and because, you know, hey, we hold them up to our heads. Um, how do we actually get those signals from a very noisy environment among all the mobile phones here on Earth up in space and do it in a way that actually works well? Not to mention they have to correct for things like uh, Doppler offset. Uh, they had to bring the software that's normally found on terrestrial cell sites and get that up to space um, to be able to account for things like Doppler offset. So it's been really fascinating to see the innovation, but this is happening, folks, and this is happening right now. It's early days. But we as a ham community and the AWRL has to understand that the idea of not having cell coverage and thinking you're going to tote your radio in the back country to be able to call for help, that is rapidly coming to a close. Um, you're going to have cell coverage everywhere. Right now, it's pretty basic, right? A simple text message. It might take 15 seconds, 25 seconds to send. But believe me, in the future, it's going to be basic texting. It's going to be to anybody, not just emergency services. It might be even phone calls. Um, this is where things are going, and the hundreds of millions of dollars are pouring in. Are we paying attention like we should be? I don't know. Let me show you Exhibit A from the AWRL. Now, what would this video be without some irony? Now, September is National Preparedness Month, so let's go to the AWRL.org and let's take a look at this. Prepare to communicate when all else fails. When all else fails. Heck, the AWRL has trademarked when all else fails. That is what the problem consists of, folks. If we keep talking about ham radio in this context of really making it primarily about MCOM, primarily about when all else fails, the ultimate communications method, ham radio is going to die a slow, slow, painful death. Now, let me pause because I can hear some of you yelling through the screen right now. I'm not saying that MCOM is invaluable. I'm not saying that we can help augment in certain rare circumstances. I'm not saying it's not a valuable skill to know how to do wind link or some of the other things that we know how to do from a technical perspective um, when no other communication means exists right now. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is if we keep talking about ham radio in the primary lens, the primary marketing message that we focus on is when this all else fails MCOM, when the world ends, you know, grab your gear, go out in the woods and put a wire in the tree. It's just not going to work. If everyone's going to be able to have coverage anywhere in the world, how are you going to recruit new hams into the hobby? I'll tell you how. You don't focus on this Aries when all else fails mantra. You, it's not that you ignore it. It's not that it's not important at some level. It's just you don't want to focus on it. You want to make it a sub point to your marketing. You don't want to make it one of the central messages, the central themes of what you, the AWRL, are marketing, or if you're a local club or what have you. Focus on the maker movement. 
tinkering, experimentation, trying all kinds of different you know, ways of experimenting with RF. That's really what we should be focused on. In fact, I think AMSAT should get a lot more importance than it has right now because I think if you look at the space race and what's going on with kind of the revitalization of space, if you want to capture a kid's imagination right now, I mean, just look at what SpaceX is doing and then try to bridge that over into ham radio with, you know, satellite comms, with ISS stuff. I mean, it's always been there, but I think that's actually a renewed importance that we're not placing enough emphasis on right now. Um, so, again, it's not that these things are not important. It's just it can't be one of the main messages because we're not what we were even 30 years ago maybe even 20 years ago. Technology continues to advance at a rapid pace. We have to understand that. Um, we're not the primary in a disaster situation. Um, these networks are becoming more resilient. They're not perfect. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is if we continue to talk about it and make it a central theme and not a sub-theme, we are going to really struggle recruiting in the future. Because what kid's going to be like, well, I can literally stand in Antarctica and get help if I need it. Why am I going to buy a Baofang for $25 and take that with me hiking? That's not a resonating message. If we continue doing it, we are going to die a slow, painful death. Or we're just going to said not continue to actually recruit new membership and younger folks into the hobby. Younger being like 40 and younger somewhere in there. Um, it just ain't going to work. So if the ARRL doesn't understand this and look at what's happening in this major shift and the fact that your cell phone is never going to be without service and you're going to be able to call for help from anywhere on earth, I don't know. They need way more help than I can provide. But again, we have to shift the focus of how we recruit and it's not when all else fails. It is a part. It is not the primary part. Let me know what you think. Drop me a comment down below. My head's exploded. Um, I talk about this a lot on Twitter, at K0LWC on Twitter, at K0LWC on Instagram. So not my first foray into this topic. It is here on YouTube. Drop me a comment. Am I crazy? I feel like we're just missing the message here. Do you agree? Let me know what you think. I'll catch you again next time.